Yes, um, I'm Alex Lawrence. I'm the city of Boston's uh, first ever chief people officer. Um, but before uh, running HR and labor relations and people operations for the city of Boston, um, I did about uh, 10 years in civic tech, so came from uh, the city of Boston's IT department. Um, so today I thought in terms of sort of highlighting the things that were uh, tips on sort of like retaining um, a human centered, uh, or taking a human centered approach to uh, the work that we're doing in people operations in the city of Boston, I sort of thought I would frame it in like lessons from civic technology and how that sort of maps onto how we're looking at retention in the city of Boston, because I felt that might be appropriate for this audience. Um, and so I thought that might be a nice lens to sort of tell a few stories of the things that we're doing. Um, and so I, uh, one of the things that I think that we're doing that is particularly unique um, is really thinking about how we write policies in ways that are um, human centered and written in plain language and well designed. Uh, when I got to the city of Boston, most of our personnel policies were um, just sounded like they were written by lawyers and took a sort of masters in human resources to be able to understand. And so uh, when we recently rolled out um, some changes to our paid parental leave policy, we um, basically took the, the policy document and made it beautiful and really easy to understand um, with a beautiful uh, FAQ section that was super clear and graphic. Um, and so I think for, for those folks who aren't necessarily in their HR departments, um, this is a way that you can sort of offer some of the uh, services that uh, more digital skilled folks have. Um, and so this was a collaboration that we did with some of the, the practices and tools that our digital team brought in. Um, and we are basically going to do this for the next 200 policies uh, that we rewrite at the city. Um, so just really excited to share that as an as a way that um, that we can sort of collaborate across uh, different folks doing this kind of work. Um, and we have found just employees, like when they see this document are utterly shocked at uh, what it looks like and um, really just sort of changes their perspective on, on what kind of organization they're interacting with. Um, the, the next piece um, is really thinking, obviously I don't need to explain to anyone why piloting and testing on this call is important to doing, is important to do, um, but we've done that with again, policies in a way that I haven't heard folks do. So we in the city of Boston have 37 collective bargaining units. Um, so we are uh, familiar with operating in a very complex labor environment, um, you know, civil service sort of layered on top of that. So a whole bunch of complexity. Um, so when we were uh, shifting to hybrid work, it was going to be a really big challenge for us to think about how we um, not just created a policy that worked for folks, but um, one that we were going to basically get a whole bunch of really complicated stakeholders to agree upon. Um, and so we decided to try to do it as a pilot to basically say to our union partners across our workforce and our department heads, hey, I know that you're worried about how some of these things are going to work. And so rather than trying to write a policy from the get go that is going to meet everyone's needs, let's just do this as a pilot. Um, uh, do it for six months, uh, do a bunch of surveys and feedback. Um, and we did that and it actually went incredibly well. We made very minor changes to the policy, um, but we were able to basically get it across um, our entire complex unionized workforce in about a period of six months, um, which is what the mayor had challenged us to do. And we somehow did it. Um, so just, I think, thinking about the, the the application of pilots um, to policies in in the HR space was something we had never done before, and I think was was pretty successful. Um, and then finally, um, my sort of third overall theme and story I want to share is about listening to our users. So there were so many different interventions and, and things that we could do to basically show that we cared about our employees and really wanted to sort of change the way that um, people operations interacted with the workforce. Um, and when I started, we were super lucky to have an incredibly active employee resource group um, that was really active in the um, transportation, the bicycle and active transportation space. And they had written a letter to the mayor sort of outlining the ways that they wanted to uh, see the city respond. Um, and so as uh, we decided to, rather than trying to come up with something on our own um, about the, the best sort of first big policy um, change that we were going to make and program that we were going to roll out, we decided we should do the one that our employees directly told us about. Um, and they had done this incredibly thoughtful um, sort of set of asks um, that included uh, free membership to using blue bikes, um, a sort of active transit 
uh, uh, public transit subsidy um, and some bicycle maintenance and repair benefits. And we've been able to roll that out um, to a lot of uh, fanfare and excitement from employees. Um, so just, you know, those are, are three sort of simple or maybe not that simple, three things that that we have done over the past year um, that hopefully really just focus on, um, you know, not just recruiting new talent, but showing our employees that, um, that we care, that we're listening um, and that we're investing in uh, being the kind of employer that, that people want to work for. Um, you know, I think sometimes people think, well, you know, we're not going to get folks in government because we don't have cereal on the walls or whatever uh, kind of fancy thing that you can get in the private sector. Of course, wages is always a, a huge concern, um, but we found that um, at least at least for now, really just sort of like being able to do some of these um, lighter touch uh, things in, in, um, that are not entirely financially based, um, but really based on showing people that we can be a more sort of flexible, different kind of workforce has been really successful. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you.